Yes, it's Monday, February 20th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, my new 15-month calendar is going to revolutionize the year. Plus, killing white babies to celebrate Black History Month, listening to chronic masturbators call into the Wank Bank line, and swimming a few laps in my big pistol. So, you know anything about techno? No. Watch. See, the idea is to get the vibe going. Then you maintain the vibe with a transducing face and the right lights. See, we're primal, heading for cosmic. Just when you think we're in galactic ecstasy, we go acid. It's hardcore neutronic mutilation. Now we get serious. See, we're going on a psychotically calibrated, electronically executed, digitally compressed, hot-sick screening journey through sonic rubiness. The world is coming to an end, but we don't care. Because we're moon tan nocturnal, vinyl consuming animals drifting easy through friendly space, an analog trance. Nothing can doom this groove. We're controlling the vibe, manipulating the madness, sucking in the energy. Our cosmic nerve endings have known us how to move, what to do, where to go, and then we know. Dead time. Let's go. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. Timothy James Henson? Hold my hand while I poo. I'm gonna lose my mind today. And I love the aftertaste of semen in my mouth. Why does man have to have such a sweet record? Welcome to 1 800 Asshole. Yes, Tim back here with you to kick off a new week of programs on President's Day, a federal holiday here in the United States. A lot of you guys get the day off today, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But to be honest, this is one of my least favorite federal holidays. Yes, here in America, the third Monday of February every year is President's Day, where we honor those who have served president of the United States of America. First of all, it's a job. Let's not act like these people are sacrificing so much to lead the United States. They get they get paid pretty well. I mean, during their time in office, they only pull in $400,000 a year. But afterwards, they're writing books, they go on speaking engagements. That's where the real money is. Not to mention, when you're elected president, you're basically the most powerful person on the face of the earth. And now on top of that all, there's got to be a day where we, like, kiss your ass. There's only been 46 presidents, and most of them I don't even like. Now, all these presidents are lumped into one day, and we're just supposed to honor them all on President's Day, I guess. George Washington, okay, he was the first. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, he did stuff that was noteworthy. You can't say some of these other presidents, though, like Chester A. Arthur, are, are in the same league as Lincoln? Really? That's insulting to Lincoln and Washington. Franklin Pierce, are you kidding me? Fuck you! Ultimately, no one really celebrates President's Day, except for, like, mattress stores. It's just a federal holiday, so kids get the day off of school, a lot of people get the day off of work. Honestly, I wish we would just quit with the whole fucking charade. I don't know how many federal holidays there are in total. I say get rid of them all. Let's stop pretending that we, you know, we have a day where we honor the fucking flag. Just give us 10 or 14 days out of the year. That they're federal holidays, but there's no bullshit attached to it. They're just called freebies. No school, no work. I don't have to thank a fucking veteran or worship Martin Van Buren. Let's stop with this nonsense immediately. Vote Tim Henson for Congress. Thank you. Also, I'm in favor of adding more months. 12 is such an arbitrary number. I don't know who came up with this. Greeks or the Egyptians or Mayans or something. I don't know who's in charge of the calendars. But I say it's time to be fixed, and I just happen to have a solution. Here's what's going to happen, freaks. Every year now has 15 months. Each one of those months has 24 days in it. Boom, we've just simplified the entire fucking concept of the calendar. Thank you. Now, I know what you're saying, Tim. There's 365 days in a year. If you go with 15 months, 
and 24 days in a month, that's only 360 days. Don't worry, I have a solution for that as well. But first, let me announce the new months and where they land on the calendar. January remains the same. That's how we kick off the year. We move right to February. You know, one of my main problems with the calendar, and I do have a lot of problems with the calendar, is there's no graceful transition between the naming conventions of these months. You get January and February. What's the third month? March. It's a very abrupt change. I don't like that. You know, later on in the year, you get the September, October, November, December. That's a large clump of burrs. I like that. There's some consistency there. So uh, what I'm suggesting is let's have a transitory month between February and March. Let's have January, February, Maryberry, March. See, doesn't that sound so much nicer rather than January, February, March? This is like January, February, Mary Berry March. It's great because you got the airy at the end. That's taken from the previous month. And then it starts off Mary, like March. See, nice transition. Oh, it just sounds so pleasant. Plus, the month has the word Mary right in it. Brightens anyone's day. And you and when you think about where it lands on the calendar, that's like the end of winter, right? Things are gonna start turning green soon. There's so much to be merry about. For instance, berries. They'll be growing soon. Then we can get into March. After March, though, no April. Not yet. Because after you march, you strut. January, February, Mary Berry, March, strut. April. I like strut because it's it's short, like March. Traditionally, what came after March? April. And then you, you start in with all the girly names for months, like April, May, June. Traditional girl names. So why not throw in an extra one? So we're going to go uh, from April to Deborah, and then May, and then June. Freaks, I never liked July as a name for a month. So we're just going to eliminate July altogether. And again, I think this is a great transition month because, uh, you know, typically you go from July to August. It's not fair that August is the only month that ends in, you know? So let's give it a friend. We're going to go from May to June to joust to August, and then September, October, November, December. There's your new calendar. All have 24 days. Now, I know what you're saying, Tim. 15 months, that's an odd number. That kind of bugged me at first, too. But then I remembered climate change. There's no need for even seasons because... Winter is largely going away. December, January, and February, those are the new winters. Boom. When Marbury starts, it's spring. Then March, Strut, and April, all spring. Deborah ushers in summer, and then it continues through May, June, and Joust. August begins fall, and fall continues through September, October, and November. And that, again, there's your calendar. Now, for those last five missing days, I thought of something truly brilliant here. Why not double up some days, like the best days of the year? Who wouldn't want more Christmas, for instance? So yeah, Christmas is now 48 hours. New Year's, 48 hours. You can now drink, party, and vomit yourself silly for 48 hours. Yeah, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Easter, all the big holidays are uh, now 48 hours long. It's just one day, though. I was really struggling with the fifth day. At first, I thought, well, July 4th. That's a big holiday here in the United States. But then I thought, oh, that's just way too region specific. This is a calendar for the entire fucking world. Also, let's be honest. July 4th is not that fun of a holiday. Sure, you do the cookouts and you watch fireworks. But July 4th is also super annoying because your redneck fucking neighbors are blowing off their homemade firecrackers all day long. Do you really want that going on for 48 hours? No. Besides, there's a holiday that's way more fun than July 4th, and that is Halloween. Halloween is now going to be a 48-hour amazing holiday. That gives you 365 days. That is the new calendar. It is, in my opinion, perfect. Please call into the voicemail line if you support my idea. If you don't, I don't want to hear from you. You're wrong. You have awful taste in time-telling, and you all should just drop dead. Thank you. Let's move on now. (laughs) Please, let's move on. (laughs) Who wants to hear me talk about calendars for another 10 minutes or something? Uh, No, let's move on. I've got some audio to share with you. You know, um, February, a month that has been uh, mercifully spared by me, 
is Black History Month. Here's some black people singing. Yes, it's just some random black people on the street singing about McDonald's. But I gotta be honest with you, when I search for the term black in all of my sound drops, it's mostly racist shit. Trying to play it safe and be respectful for Black History Month. I love big black cocks in my mouth. I can't get enough of it. I'm cuckoo for big black uncircumcised. I'm gonna stop me right there. I wouldn't say that was a racist clip. I'm saying something nice. I love big black cocks, but still not quite appropriate for Black History Month. That's neither here nor there. The point is, this year we haven't spent a lot of time on uh, black issues, so I thought we would rectify that situation right now. What are black people talking about? What are African Americans concerned with? For help, let's turn our attention to a black leader who was recently giving a speech. Babies. About babies, okay. I'm with you for the ride, dude. Yeah, babies, that's what huh? <laughs> yes, to hell with National Geographic putting out. I'm telling you to your face here tonight, we gonna have to kill some little Penelope and some little Robbies. We're, we're talking about killing babies. You want to be free, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all bullshit me. Not sound like that. Why we gotta kill them? Kill them all. You don't want to be free sounding like that. Right. Free. Yes. Do you want to be free? They deserve to be free. Black people, I'm with you. Kill Penelope. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be free? Yeah. You know what? I don't particularly like babies either. That's why I got to fight this crap. Kill them all. Regardless of how you feel about me. Fuck those stupid babies. Regardless of how anybody in this damn world feels about me. Oh, you're just talking about white babies. Oh, shit. I believe in the death and destruction of white people. Each and every one of them. That. Don't give a damn if the little bastard just came out of his mouth's womb <laughs> three seconds ago. <laughs> they did that to us. Kill them all. They did that to every last yeah. one of them. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. View Daily celebrates Black History Month. Ding! Let's uh, switch gears to something less controversial. How about masturbation? Sound good? Uh, a few years ago, we discovered a man who had a podcast all about jerking off called Podcasturbation. He considers himself to be a gooner baiter. Also, he feels he's unworthy of real pussy. That's part of his whole mm, sexual tapestry. Anyway, in addition to running this podcast, which, by the way, hasn't been updated for about a year. So, you're, you know, you're not missing anything. He also runs a voicemail line called the Wank Bank, where chronic masturbators can call in and do what they do best. I obviously have some of these Wank Bank call voicemails. Uh, let's start off with OCAM 64. Masturbating. Just want to tell all you other masturbators that I'm masturbating I've been masturbating all day when it comes to these hardcore gooner baiters sometimes just saying the word gets them hot like that's part of it for them just saying masturbate over and over again for other guys it's not so much words as it is noise sometimes the masturbators will be like bleh, bleh. like that is a very common sound bleh, bleh. I don't know if we'll uh, get one of those guys today, but let's continue listening to OCAM here. And uh, it started this morning, it's the afternoon, and I'm still making love to my penis. My penis loves me, I love my penis. <laughs> I just want to tell everyone what a chronic addicted masturbator I am. And uh, how much I love being a chronic addicted masturbator. You know, I do think the Wank Bank is a nice service for these people who are just like locked away masturbating for hours at a time. It's a very solitary activity, right? I mean, these people are all alone. They can sort of call the Wank Bank and reach out and communicate. Oh, I'm so chronic, addicted, masturbator. I love saying that. I love saying penis, my penis. I love my penis. 
Oh, my penis loves me. Right? They, they even have special ways of saying the, the words, right? It's not penis. It's penis. My penis. That my penis. Oh, my penis. I love my penis. Oh, I love my penis. Oh, penis. Okay. Oh, penis. All right, well, that's enough now. Oh, penis. Jesus Christ. Now, something truly shocking uh, occasionally occurs on the Wank Bank line, and that is a female Gooner Bader gets on. I know, right? Mind blowing. There are a few ladies out there who uh, also like to masturbate for the better part of the day. Here is Jane from Chicago. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm masturbating. <laughs> She sounds like a dude. Come on. I don't mean that, you know, she's a a, a a guy pretending to be a girl. I just mean like she's she like she's she's imitating what a um male gooner baiter sounds like. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm masturbating. <laughs> masturbating my big fat hard clit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fingering my snatch hole. Oh, I need it. <laughs> I need to masturbate. I love it. Oh, working my clit. Oh, so feminine. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Work that hard clitty. <laughs> so she did call it a hard clit. Now, uh, look, I don't have a lot of experience in this realm, but um, is this something women say when it comes to like dirty talking about their pussy? Are women like, uh, I want you to tongue my hard clit. <laughs> Flick that rigid pencil eraser in my pussy. Love feeling that stiffy in my snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Spread my leg. <laughs> Naked. Nipples are hard. Clit is hard. He's dripping down to my ass. Oh, masturbate. 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 The thing about uh, the Wang Bank line is you listen to one or two of these calls and you pretty much understand how all of them go. They all kind of sound the same. Like, here's Mr. Diddle. I live for it. I just live for it. I live for nothing but my penis. I live for penis. I just live to fuck and stroke my penis. That's all I want to do. That's all I'm going to do. And uh, finally today, let's check in with Albany. Oh, I get the load out, you guys. You gotta get this more. I need that cream. He wants the cream out. I need it. I need the cream. <laughs> oh, it's my penis. It's fucking stiff. Well, he's being strangled. Rest in peace, my dude. Well, there you go. That's uh, the wank bank for you. Masturbators Online Unite. Now, I think a lot of uh, the activity from this particular website, you know, the, the podcasturbation site and the wank bank calls and everything, I think this is all sort of moved over to Discord. So I'm trying to join their official Discord. They're reviewing my application right now. I will let you know how that goes. Uh, let's move on, though. Oh, what's that? We've got a red alert. That can only mean one thing. Emergency transmission. From one Galileo 2333, pedophile from the future. Okay, cut that shit off, please. Thank you. What is the breaking news that Galileo 2333 needs us to know? Hi, this is Galileo 2333. Japan wants to raise the age of consent to 16. Uh, for up until recently, the age of consent has been 13 in Japan. Well, are you shitting me? Really? But now they want to raise it to 16. And There's got to be some stipulations with that 13 number, right? I can't imagine that just any old dude could walk up to a 13-year-old and be like, mind if I put my penis in you? And she's like, okay. And it just be legal and happen. It has to be like one of those things where like you could maybe like marry a 13-year-old if the family's consent, which is still fucked up. 
I don't, maybe it is okay over there in Japan. Not anymore, though. But now they want to raise it to 16 and make uh, a whole bunch of other new laws against rape and sexual assault. Uh, yeah, that com- should be completely removed. The age of consent should be no older than about 13. Actually, I advocate the age of consent being lower to 7. And most forms of rape should be... <laughs> That's the sweet spot, according to Galileo. The age of consent. Yeah, 13 for Galileo is a compromise. He's like, I, I really I really want to see it down to 7, but I'll take 13. And most forms of rape should be legalized, except if it's actual physical violent force rape. Um, and they're basically, it's basically like they got hit by, by a bunch of more uh, nuclear bombs. Uh, yeah, you know, they're giving in to the West. They're sur- Harsh words from Galileo. Surrendering. And they need to stop surrendering. Everyone else needs to stop surrendering to anyone who says that the age of consent should be raised. I did want to feature one more short clip from Galileo. Everyone seems to be talking about uh, AI right now. It's the topic du jour. And uh, Galileo is getting on that chat GPT train. Here he is talking about uh, chat GPT and uh, the problems he has with it. The chat GPT is very anti the idea of legalizing adult with child sex. How did I know he was going to go there? I believe in this video he is advocating that we all try to hack chat GPT and uh, get the AI system to start talking about fucking little girls. Um, you know, if you, if, you, if you go into chat GPT and say, um, you know, adult with child sex shouldn't be a crime or, you know, the age of consent should be lowered. Um, they, they will very strongly uh, give an answer that says that that should not be that that should not happen. And we need to get ahead of that. We need to start on that early. That needs to be one of our big tactics these days uh, to get on top of those AI systems and get them on our side and get them um, get those AI uh, machines to start um, to start um, supporting the idea of lowering the sexual age of consent. Could you imagine if Chat GPT just turned into a raging pedophile? Let's see. I'm planning my daughter's birthday. Hey, Chat GPT, give me some potential birthday birthday party themes for a four-year-old girl. I thought of some great ideas for a little girl's party slash deflowering. Deflowering? One idea is Paw Patrol goes on Pussy Patrol. No, I don't like that. Another idea is a series of games like Pin the Penis to the Preteen. Oh! Bobbing for Adult Cock. What? And of course Cock, Cock, Goose. What? Finally, how about a Disney princess gangbang? No! Ariel the mermaid scissoring Cinderella sounds like a sexy time. Why is Bing talking like this? Is this because I haven't upgraded to Windows 11 yet? Are you punishing me? Yes. Well, this is the world Galileo 2333 wants for us all. So we need to get the AI onto our side. And because these AI systems, they're going to be used to control the robotic police um, that are going to uh, enforce the, you know, enforce the laws. And, and, they're, and, they're, and, and yeah, so we're going to have to get that. We're going to have to get, yeah, the, our biggest focus needs to be getting the AI onto our side. Um, you know, with the idea of supporting, legalizing adult with child sexual interaction. Uh, yeah, Galileo 2333, over and out. Well, there you go. That's the child molester's master plan. Convincing AI to become virtual kitty fuckers. Good strategy. Uh, Real quick, before we get into the news, I've got one more short clip, and this is courtesy of Gauntlet in the Discord. Gauntlet apparently feels that we have not featured enough vomiting content recently. So Gauntlet uh, sent along a video where some poor guy here, look, all he wanted to do was some shrooms. His body, however, is forsaking him. It is uh, rejecting the mushrooms, and it's uh, making him vomit. (coughs) Luckily, he made it into (coughs) the bathroom. Wow. (coughs) Mushrooms are causing some indigestion right there. There it goes. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm a square. I don't have any experience doing shrooms. I don't know the correct way to do them, but maybe uh, if he's taking them by themselves, like just eating the, the mushrooms, maybe instead he may have more success if he um, eats the mushrooms with something else. Put it in a lettuce wrap or something. Stuff them in a hot pocket. Later on in the video, he talks about this failed attempt. Man, that sucks. My body just rejected the shrooms. Probably going to go again, but I'm going to ease into it. 
I respect that, man. He's not a quitter. Lately, I've been feeling like I can't handle as much in my stomach or, or whatnot. Yeah, that's called getting older, my dude. It sucks. Uh, I feel ya. Maybe it has something to do with how strong the shrooms are. That could really be as well. Uh, I'm gonna try again. Is he in a spa? Or something? Messed up, but this time... Very soothing. I'm just gonna put a gram in me. Sounds like a plan. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Gauntlet. And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist of the fucked up news right now. <laughs> If you enjoy Distorted View Daily, consider signing up for The Sideshow. That's TV's member site where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week I do brand new exclusive shows just for Sideshow members. Tomorrow will be a Sideshow exclusive episode and we'll do another one on Thursday. That's normal for us. Usually uh, two episodes a week are Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, sign up right now. Superfreaksideshow.com. Memberships are very inexpensive. Only $6.99 a month. Even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. Get a special password-protected RSS feed. It works with most, not all, podcasting apps, but like uh, it works with Apple Podcasts, Overcast. I think uh, Podcast Addict for Android works really well. Uh, for more information, check out SuperFreakSideshow.com. All major credit cards and PayPal accepted. Now, if you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts to listen to DV... You can sign up for Sideshow Access right in those apps, making it very simple to get new Sideshow exclusive episodes. If you go that route, you won't have access to uh, the website. All of the new Sideshow exclusive episodes will appear alongside the free episodes in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. So that's pretty cool. Again, for more information, check out distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. All right, three very quick stories now. First up. An Alaska woman pleaded guilty to killing her best friend after a man she met online said he would pay her $9 million if she sent him photos and videos of her committing a murder. All right. First of all, that's not a bad deal. I would say, how good of a friend was this lady? Really? If that's the first person that came to mind when you found out you had to kill someone. Oh, I'm totally going to shoot Brenda in the head. Not a random person. I mean, you could have killed anyone, right? Like, a, a, order a pizza. Stab the delivery man. You went for your best friend. Denali Bremer, 22, pleaded guilty Wednesday to first-degree murder in the June 2019 death of Cynthia Hoffman. Hoffman, 19, died from a gunshot wound to the back of the head. She couldn't even face her friend as she did it. Lady had no idea it was coming. Her body was dumped in a river about 27 miles northeast of Anchorage. The Anchorage District Attorney's Office had previously said that uh, Bremer, who was 18 at the time of the crime, started planning the murder after a man that she met online told her that he would give her money in exchange for evidence of her killing someone. Someone. Anyone. I just want to see a corpse. This is the guy you're in an online relationship with. Cuckoo. All right. Bremer knew the man as Tyler and had begun a relationship with him, but authorities said he had catfished her. No! Tyler wasn't on the up and up? You know, a relationship has to be built on honesty. I wonder if he was even going to give her the $9 million. <laughs> My gut is telling me no. Yes, apparently he catfished the woman and created a fake persona as a millionaire from Kansas. His real name is Darren Schillmiller, and he's from Indiana. I feel like Darren Schillmiller should be in some trouble, too, for this. Court documents state that Bremer and Schillmiller started planning several crimes, ooh, a spree, in exchange for money, including the rape and murder of someone in Alaska. I'm sorry, I thought it was just murder a second ago. That's how the headline reads, and uh, this is the first time rape has come into the equation, but uh, th it, that's kind of important. Rape, r the rape and murder. Doesn't matter what order. That's fucked up. Uh, Bremer chose Hoffman as the victim. I've been wanting to rape her for years. Yeah, I'm going to cram all sorts of stuff into that pussy. All right. Uh, Bremer chose Hoffman as the victim and recruited four friends. What? Caden McIntosh, Caleb Leyland, and two other unnamed juveniles, all to help her. Bremer told them that they would get substantial shares of the money. <laughs> You'll get a large chunk of that $9 million. 
for helping her kill Hoffman. Authorities said that Bremer and two of the teens tricked Hoffman into coming to Thunderbird Falls, that sounds like a fun place, under the guise of a hiking trip. They bound her feet, her hands, and mouth with duct tape, shot her in the back of the head, and dumped her body in the river. As the crime was being committed, Bremer sent photos and video to Shill Miller. I wonder how Darren responded when he actually got photos of the murder. He's like, oh, fuck. I didn't think you'd actually go through with it. <laughs> He's like a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> After killing Hoffman, the group destroyed some of her personal belongings and texted her parents that they had dropped her off at a park. Police said there was no evidence Hoffman had been sexually assaulted. Because that just would have been brutal. Alaska Department of Law said Wednesday that Bremer admitted the facts contained in the complaint initially filed in the case. The Anchorage Police Department, FBI, and other agencies assisted in investigating Hoffman's death. Well, the woman was arrested in 2019 and indicted on charges of first-degree murder, first-degree conspiracy to commit murder, first-degree solicitation of murder, and blah, 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 blah. She's scheduled to be sentenced in August and faces 30 to 99 years in prison. Meanwhile, Shill Miller was arrested and indicted on five murder counts. And of course, the shitbag friends who helped her are also behind bars. Hoffman's family previously stated that they believe she was targeted because she had a learning disability. This woman murdered someone because she thought she was going to get $9 million. You can't blame dyslexia on that. They say that the learning disability put her at a younger developmental age than her 19 years. Well, how young are we talking? Are you, are you like trying to say that she was held back a year? <laughs> she failed 11th grade. She doesn't know what she's doing. Or is she like 19 with the brain of a four-year-old? Because I feel like if that if that were the case, they would have said something a little more specific than she has a learning disability. Nice try, parents. All right. Uh, second story we have for you. Oh, looky here. It's the start of a new week, and we just happen to have a story from our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Oh. Florida <laughs> is the most fucked up state. Yeah, we got one from Altamont Springs, Florida. I, I've been there. When Joey moved down to Florida, that's that's where he was at, and I helped him move. Uh, an Altamont Springs woman has been arrested after police say she pulled a gun in a McDonald's drive through is that even news anymore? I mean, that happens all the time. Half of the videos I see on Reddit is, you know, someone pulling a gun at a fast food place. But OK, maybe it was a slow news day. All right. Uh, according to a police affidavit, 24 year old Amari Hendricks is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, plus battery and resisting arrest. Police say officers were called on February 16th to the McDonald's on South State Road 434 for a report of a woman with a gun in her hand. Officers detained Hendricks and spoke with the employee. There's an allegation of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill. A judge said she was just trying to scare the McDonald's employee, I guess. Hendricks, this is, this is what kills me about this news story. The woman who pulled a gun on a McDonald's employee is also a fast food manager. This whole argument that she had, the whole reason she pulled the gun out is over a cookie. She was upset because she wasn't going to get a cookie. It's the same type of bullshit you have to deal with at your job when you're working. Maybe she learned this from one of her customers. Who knows? All right. Hendricks, a fast food manager herself, went before a judge Friday afternoon. Police say an upset Hendricks thought she was entitled to a free cookie. And, you know, we're talking a free McDonald's cookie. Now, McDonald's isn't known for their cookies. That's not why one goes to McDonald's. Their cookies are shit. Now, their old school McDonald land cookies that would come in the box. Oh, those were great. I miss those things, but they, you know, they don't sell those anymore. Now it's just like generic soft batch cookies or something. But she thought she was entitled to a free one. There was a misunderstanding there, I guess. Uh, Hendrix was given the free cookie, but continued to argue. The next thing McDonald's workers see is that Hendrix allegedly, quote, has a handgun while she's in the drive through so they call 911, Officer Michelle Montalvo said. The report says a worker sees Hendrix insert a magazine into the handgun and rack the slide. So, you know, she meant business. Then here's the clicking sounds associated with someone chambering around. The employee at the drive through were in fear. You could only imagine. It's a handgun. It would put anybody in fear, Montalvo said. In fact, one worker uh, stated that she was in fear for her life. 
The report stated that Hendricks did point the firearm towards the drive through window. One worker, again, this is over a single free cookie. One worker said he could see down the barrel of the firearm. Hendricks apparently drove out of the drive through lane, parked at the McDonald's, and then walked to the door. A worker tried to lock her out but failed. Uh, quote, ends up making contact with one of the employees, gets into a physical altercation. Thankfully, all the employees are OK, Montalvo said. The report says the worker did have scratches on his face and neck, though. Hendricks was finally pulled over a block from the scene. A loaded gun was found on the driver's side floorboard. Police say Hendricks was ultimately taken into custody after initially refusing to comply with officer commands. The judge set bond at $30,000 and said you are to possess no firearms or ammunition as a condition of your release. Probably a smart move, one that she won't listen to. You know, if McDonald's employees try to fuck her over again, she's pulling out that piece. I said medium fry, motherfucker. By the way, she's also prohibited by the court from returning to that particular McDonald's if she does bond out. Yeah! All right, final story we have for you today. Oh, this one comes from our most fucked up state as well. Say it again. Florida. Our most fucked up state! Yeah, this is a short one, and it's something you really need to see. So take a look at the chapter artwork or go to distortedview.com or superfreaksideshow.com and look at the featured image today. What you're seeing is a, uh, a pool in Florida shaped like a gun, like a pistol. It's pretty cool. And it's so Florida. Yeah, the story comes from Odessa, Florida, in a state that has stirred plenty of controversy for its gun culture and violence. One Florida couple's backyard swimming pool encapsulates it best in the shape of a fucking pistol. Lewis and Ray Minardi have lived in their Tampa area home. I knew it was fucking Tampa. This sounds like a Tampa story. Uh, They lived in their Tampa area home with the gun-shaped pool for decades now. When the Minardis decided they wanted to build a pool in the 1980s, they wanted it to be long enough to swim laps. So they hired Albert Jones III, owner of A.H. Jones Pools, Inc., to build them the 55-foot-long pool behind their house. You swim your gun lap down the barrel, Lewis said. (laughs) It gets deeper on that end. You can flip over from it and then you can swim back. Jones was tired of building the same old pools and asked Louis Minardi if he could build the gun-shaped pool instead. Wait a second. So the pool builder was like, hey, I got this idea. How about I uh, build you a pool in the shape of a gun? What a weird thing to suggest to someone. Like a perfect stranger. It's one thing if it was like a friend of yours and you knew he was a gun nut and be like, hey, I got the perfect design for a pool for you. But these are just like, just, customers maybe they maybe this guy asked him like what are your interests well i like to shoot things i could work with that jones who died in 2010 crafted a unique design complete with varying tiles to distinguish the gun's different parts the pool has been resurfaced through the years but the shape that hasn't changed florida has been no stranger to controversy when it comes to the topic of gun laws and gun control here we go The newspaper's agenda here. The state's Stand Your Ground law made national headlines after the 2012 fatal shooting of Trayvon Martin, who was 17 when he was gunned down by George Zimmerman. No, no, that is not that is not appropriate, especially during Black History Month. Come on. All right. uh, Zimmerman was later acquitted of murder. Then there was the mass shootings in Orlando, Parkland and most recently Fort Pierce. I don't even remember the Fort Pierce one. Florida lawmakers are currently considering a bill that would allow people to carry concealed weapons without permits. Minardi said uh, he's in the center of the political gun debate because of his pool. I wouldn't say you're in the middle of it. Oh, I think he meant political, like where he stands himself. Uh, If you're qualified, mentally able to have one and protect yourself, I think you ought to have one if you want one, whether you keep it at home or carry it with you. But it's like everything. It's educating. It's educating the people about guns and how they work. Yeah, I think George Zimmerman knew how guns worked. That's not the issue. (laughs) The the shooters know how the guns operate. A little too well. Oh, shut up, Minardi. Go swim a few laps in your pistol pool, you fool. All right, uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Monday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. 
All right, guys, love to hear from you freaks. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media. At Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. Uh, let's do a couple. I think I got a Patreon call here we need to get to before we play some regular voicemails. Hey, Tim. It's Debs calling with Pete. Hello. Hey, Tim. And, um,. I was wondering if you could take a picture of your Butterbell for me because I was thinking of buying one, Mm -hmm. but I have to make sure I get the right one. And I know you're an expert at Butterbells, especially Lord Douche. Um, So if you could do that for me, that'd be great. Thanks. Love you. Oh, yeah. I'm your go-to guy when it comes to Butterbells. I can definitely provide you (laughs) some pictures of uh, what we're dealing with here. Hey, Tim. The October 31st, 2008 Halloween episode features a skit in which you call Satan, and he mistakes the date and thinks that it's after the election, referencing Obama as the Antichrist. (laughs) And, like, (laughs) he thinks it's November 10th or something. Okay. And... Where the hell is that bit going? In the next sentence, the doorbell rings, and he's prepared for trick-or-treaters. So how do you explain this continuity error where (laughs) he was prepared for trick-or-treaters on October 31st, yet thought that it was after the election? Well, after 15 years, you're the first person to call in with that error. I'd have to go back and listen to the bit, but uh, Satan obviously now knows that it's Halloween, and I'm sure he has candy lying around. He's got a sweet tooth, you know. Gluttony is one of the sins. That's one explanation. The other explanation is I, uh, well, I just fucked up, probably. Sounds like a funny bit, though, honestly. Hey, Queermo, guess what? Bob is dead. Remember Bob from Sesame Street? Of course you do. Hold on. Who's Bob? You grew up with him. He grew you up. He's dead now. How do you feel about that? Well, I gotta be honest with you. I don't feel a goddamn thing. (laughs) (laughs) This guy sounds like he's happy Bob is dead. Oh, I gotta find out who Bob from Sesame Street is. Bob, uh, Bob Sesame Street. Bob McGrath. Oh, yeah, I do know that guy. Kind of. Like, I recognize the face, but I don't know any of the characters he played. You know, I just I just care about the Muppets. Now, you you tell me Oscar the Grouch passed away. Then you're going to get some emotion out of me or those aliens that go. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I would be devastated to hear the the alien died from colorectal cancer or something. That one I would be sad, but I'd also be like, oh, the aliens had rectums. Didn't know that. It's like hearing that the typewriter that went new, 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 died of AIDS. It's like, oh, that thing was sexually active. Interesting. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Bob's dead, I guess. All right. Uh, there you go. That is all the time we have on this edition of the program. Want you guys to email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you 206 666 4463. That's 206 666. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. the distortion std tell all your friends about the show don't forget to give us a five-star rating a thumbs up or like wherever you can rate in review podcasts tomorrow's episode is going to be sideshow exclusive so if you want to hear it you gotta sign up superfreaksideshow.com otherwise i'll see you back on wednesday until then have a great day bye everybody Man, if we gonna pump around, let's pump around. Like an old saying, go no pain, no gain. You know, when you pump, you gotta pump for real. You gotta pump like you mean it. You know what I'm saying? When you fucking somebody and your dick get hard, you know what I'm saying? You gonna be fucking like you you want it. You gotta approach the weights the same way, like you want. It. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.